Hello, Johnny. Oh. Hello, hey. Emma. <laughs> <laughs> we just uh, took a long time to start recording this, didn't it? That's my introduction to every video. Just to pop in. Yeah, do you want me to do it again? Yeah, do it again. Go on. Uh, you've got to say, uh, welcome. Oh, sorry. Uh, welcome to Johnny. <laughs> Hello, Emma. <laughs> I think you could work on it a little bit more. Just to okay. Okay. All right. There's plenty of time. Yeah. Yeah. Next time. Um, we are chatting today so that we can hear a bit more about your well, to hear a bit about your testimony and your yep. story. Um, first of all, um, do you want to just tell us a bit about how you started coming to church? Um, and Talk about that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question, Amber. Very good question. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm Johnny. Welcome. Um, yeah, I came to St John's. Well, I started going to the 11 to 14 youth group. I was invited by a friend. Uh, some of you might know Mike Ford, and there's an old old family who moved out years ago to Norfolk. They lived up up my road, the Baxter family. Um, and yeah, Mike invited me. And I kept on going and then got more and more involved in, in, in the youth group side of it. And then it was kind of a progression to come get involved in church. Um, initially, I didn't, it wasn't had, really How did you meet Mike? Uh, primary school. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then just got more and more involved and carried on going. And then I didn't want to go to church initially. It mm. really wasn't interesting to me. I found it a bit boring. Um, yeah. So did you go to the to the eleven to fourteen group then? Like, yeah, eleven to fourteen, where Andy Paul ran and Claire Sears. Um, yeah, and then then carried on going. Yeah, loved it. I was, I've always felt part of the church, but wasn't. I wasn't actually a part of the church, or I, I would say I was, probably wasn't a Christian. Mm. But there wasn't a moment in my life when I was like, I am officially a Christian. Mm. It's just I always felt well. That's kind of why I, I grew up in a household that that I would say wasn't a Christian, but because they live in this country and they, they do good things mm. uh, and they're good people, that therefore they're Christian. Mm. Um, you know, not judging them at all, but you know, now come to faith, it's like realizing actually that's not necessarily what it is. It comes mm. in the name, being Christian, you've got to believe in Christ. Mm. If you don't believe in Christ, then you're not a Christian. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can put that on my, on my quote. <laughs> It's in there. <laughs> Stop header. Um, and so when did you start coming to church on Sunday mornings? I think when I was probably about 16, 17. Mm -hmm. um, I'd been to, well, Mike had tried to get me involved, get me to come along to Soul Survivor many years. Uh, and every time he came back, I remember we would go to the park and play football and he was like, it's Johnny, it's so good, you really should come. And I was like, yeah, it's not really for me. And I was with my friend James and we, we sort of make fun of him and, and oh, we can't blaspheme, ooh. <laughs> uh, now I know how horrible that was, but yeah, so he, he tried for years to get me to come to Survivor. Mm. And then my, my gran, uh, who lived in Dorset, uh, she was ill in hospital didn't really really know how ill she was she had cancer and and for some reason i contacted barry turner to say um can i come along to sort of survivor i mean imagine that now like not now now we're in quarantine but imagine that now where actually you go to sort of survivor and someone random who you've been trying to get has come for years just suddenly messages and goes brilliant right can I, can I come along and make it happen? So they were mm. running around the campsite like, John is coming! Oh. <laughs> uh, probably a bit, a bit of shock. Um, I mean, I, I you loved my, the drama. <laughs> yeah, I bought my FAMs with me and my magazines that Mike was like, don't bring those to Soul Survivor, you idiot. Um, <laughs> so that's how kind of far away I was, or a bit clueless. Mm. Um, but yeah, you know, that, that was in incredible. And then um, from then, I, I think I started... Uh, feeling the need in myself to, to come to church mm. and that there was more to this being a Christian than than simply being a good person and and being in a Christian world or country. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What were your first kind of thoughts about church? Do you remember or not really? Yeah, I thought it was boring. Did you? Mm. Yeah, did really. Um, still do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, yeah, I thought it was boring, kind of, I suppose, I mean, I, I grew up with a family that we would, I mean, I'm not speaking out of turn, but we would sit at the table having a Sunday meal and, um, and a family, a Christian family would go past who we know are Christians and it would, it wouldn't be mocking, but it would be kind of a little bit, a little bit of criticism the fact that there's this cheesy fam- cheesy Christian family. Mm. And so I grew up thinking that being a Christian Christian was cheesy mm. and, and a bit cringy. It um, was actually that family were an incredible family, the Baxter family. Mm. And they were so generous. They were so lovely. They were so welcoming. They were always happy. Mm. Um, they were blind. And they were getting on bikes and cycling everywhere. Amazing. Um, and them, not on a normal bike <laughs> but I mean yeah and so that's the environment I grew up in mm. um, that's still quite a lot like when you first come to church you still automatically have that thought in your head don't you of like associations yeah yeah if you've been yeah. thinking that yeah, so I think there's a little tiny bit of me that, that that's still there with the mm. cheesy cheesy Christian mm. side which I sometimes battle with but yeah yeah um, and you obviously lead worship now. I do. Um, and when did you start to get involved with, in the band? Do you think? I I remember when I was younger. I think it was Soul Survivor again. Mm. I saw worship as as this incredible language to God. I think mm. an incredible kind of life changing thing where actually this this is church i remember at soft survivor again you know talking to talking to mike after the first evening and being like i mean a bit kind of looking at everyone raising their hands and doing crazy things Mm. also within that not being scared by it but being being just not in awe either that's not the right word but i think in just wow amazement that mm. uh, this is this is real this is happening this is you know they're not faking it or mm. if they're off like it everyone's doing a really good job uh, <laughs> and kind of wondering yes yeah, wondering mike and get involved and then watching the kind of looking at the worship thinking yeah i'd love to lead worship i remember saying to gay giles once um we were having a chat and um and she said oh for those who don't know gay gay um funny old name but gay and tim and gay uh, ran the they were vicars before uh, uh, John and Bron. So yeah, so uh, what was I saying? Oh, Gain spoke to me, <laughs> and uh, yeah, she said, "Oh, yeah, something. Like, what, what do you want to do in your career or something like that?" And I was like, "Gay, I know you, you won't take it seriously, but I want to be a worship leader." And she did genuinely laugh. Oh, no. And I think yeah. she, thought, she thought I couldn't be serious. Uh, I was like, no, but I'm being serious, but yeah, I'll show you or something. Mm. And she was like, Johnny, if you do, fantastic, brilliant. Um, who's calling me? Warwick. <laughs> oh, go away, Warwick. I won't answer it, it's a bit rude. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so then, uh, yeah, but then, from, then, then, then I learned the guitar. Mm. So I, remember, I remember teaching myself the guitar to lead worship. Did you? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, so and I remember thinking for years, I was like, why don't I know any secular songs or any I mean, any any other songs or anything like that? Mm. It's, it's almost it's not that I can't learn them. It's just that I learned I learned guitar to lead mm. worship, and mm. that's why I play. Um, mm. That's what I play for. So yeah, so I remember learning the guitar, and then with Paul, he was amazing, and he he involved me uh, big time and and brought me. Th- brought me through yeah he bring me through he really encouraged mm. me and gave me space um I mean, it was really really nerve-wracking at start really mm. nerve-wracking um I remember the first time singing and i'd be looking around and and you think well you haven't got a guitar at all you know you're just singing um but yeah it's great it's really good so yeah it makes i guess it makes you have a different view of worship as well when you're actually up the front leading everyone because suddenly you realize actually it's not about their feedback on me we're actually like standing here do you know what i mean like you're leading them in yeah just trying to engage people in worship to god yeah yeah i think which is a massive role as well (laughs) encourage that it's a real privilege and sometimes Mm. sometimes we go through months with with 
it seems that everyone's just or most people are just kind of like floating in and floating out and mm. not engaging and then other times you'd, you'd be wowed by it and everyone's response is is so much bigger mm. i think that though us worship leaders know how important the response is mm. and actually it's not that you're hyping anything up for the other people leading worship but actually it does really help when everyone's engaging mm. and kind of just give themselves over and that's not necessarily just physically but actually i think we do have a response physically mm. to, to give god and if you can stand at a football pitch and you know your your emotions like yeah you've got a goal actually surely we can do that in in church when worshiping the god mm. of the universe mm. um, but again i don't do it if i'm told to do it <laughs> that's my stubbornness if i'm told to do something I'm yeah to i you know um it's on survivor or something like that sometimes they'll be like jump like yeah. that's the moment where i'm like no um, i might have been jumping before that but as soon as yeah, i yeah, yeah. jump no it's i'll stand there still yeah <laughs> yeah completely the same completely. you've talked about it a bit already um but what do you appreciate about st john's i think i've always looked at at the church st john's as this little church on the hill that should be dead and buried and should just have a couple of old ladies in. Uh, I remember realizing this years ago. I was like, this, this old church that, that is just away from everything that some, lots of people know it's there, but they went there as when they're in Cub Scouts or something, but it shouldn't, not it shouldn't be have life in it, but it should be a, a church that's kind of gone and with the other churches and is open for, for historical walks. Hello, Daniel. But yes, you can have some sausages. Yeah, they're for your lunch. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Well, he'd be watching this. Uh, he could do. Right. <laughs> tell him off for that, Amber. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I was saying, I, think, you know, I remember years ago, just having that realization that actually there's something very special about that church and um, we've all got our frustrations and and at times which you can completely understand and everyone does things differently and you know but actually we're learning now it's about the, the people you know which mm. st john's is still there we're, we are church we're still going and we're not in the building mm. um yeah so it's about the people and the people are fantastic really really are mm. Um, and anyone at St John's influenced you? And yeah. how, how have they influenced you? Good, very good question, Amber. <laughs> I think, yeah, there's one, there's a, a few people absolutely that influenced me big time. Um, first one is John Johns. I mean, what an absolute legend. Mm -hmm. I think there's not one person at that church who doesn't think so. He's, <laughs> Yeah, he helped run um, 14 Plus, I think it was. Mm. Don't know. Yeah, 14 Plus. And um, yeah, he was, he was incredible. He was just a, just a completely friendly person. Mm. Like literally, and he didn't do anything specific. Just he was always friendly, always, always. I'm not, I'd say there to talk to, but... Mm. He was just, he was just such a good role model. Mm. He was always just so, so friendly. Always had time for you. Mm. you know, and like Jude Lancaster, always, she's always picking people out, isn't she? Mm. Like, it's yeah. such, such a good quality. And another mm. person is Tim Giles. Mm -hmm. Again, they, they really came along with myself and Charlotte. Um, they were pretty incredible. Mm. Uh, I won't share it here, but they were pretty, pretty amazing what they did. Um, mm. Um, Barry Turner, mm. I think there's, and then Barry and Chrissy, kind of people that Shart and I have always said we kind of want to aspire to be. Mm. Uh, like, we've always said that. I think they're they're, they're gentle, they're kind, uh, and they're always again always friendly. Mm. Uh, and and I think yeah, I think Barry's a top top bloke. Mm. Uh, and is yeah, quite, quite an incredible man. I love that. So now, what does your faith look like day to day? Good question. Um, I think day to day, there's, there's a pressure, whether it's healthy or unhealthy, to read your Bible, to pray more, to, to spend more time with God, and, and th those kind of Christ being a Christian pressures. 
um, like where you have your quiet times and and that kind of like almost guilt if you haven't done those things. Yeah. But I've come to terms and, and I'm understanding how we all tick differently and we were all completely different. Whereas Charlotte would, would listen to a song and, and look at the words, would, doesn't even look at the melody or he, hear the melody, couldn't care less. Mm. Whereas I'm all about the melody and that's just how I tick, it's how I work. So I spend a lot of my time listening to worship music. Um, I spend a lot of my time, uh, yeah, singing stuff and just generally spending time with God in that way. Mm. And I think that's how I tick. You know, I'm mm. not a big reader. Um, I, I, it doesn't, no, it doesn't do anything for me, but actually I can read it. <laughs> I can, I can work my way through a book, but it doesn't do that much for me. Whereas I listen to worship music um, many hours a day, doing what, you know, doing my activities, doing my things. But mm. and so for me, that, that excites me and that's how I spend time with God. Mm. Um, so day to day, I think I always think, oh, I probably should read my Bible more or, or even read my Bible um, or pray more. But actually we all tick differently. Mm. Um, this is who I am. And and God is who he is and I believe uh, and have a strong faith in in mm. him um that kind of that's kind of it really um, mm, he loves us no matter yeah and it's not a guilty thing mm. it can't be guilty thing. if someone tells me to read it I'm not going to read it <laughs> uh, <laughs> it comes from within it and yeah and that's okay like even if when Charlotte and I pray together it's like I'll I'll, I'll pray if I if I feel it myself to pray Mm. Um, so it, it's 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 realistic it's, it's real um i'm not hugely a, a massive fan of praying when if you're not if you don't feel the need to like that's mm. okay like if you're in a group of praying mm. actually don't pray if you don't want to pray it's, it's mm. fine. Yeah, mm. nothing changes you can still pray in your head you can still you know it's fine mm. and also she takes all the prayers she will just waffle on for hours like, well, there's no other words there. <laughs> a solid amen at the end <laughs> yeah. and so obviously johnny you were once upon a time my youth leader didn't we do um, well <laughs> haven't made that joke before <laughs> <laughs> and um also i got the pleasure of living with you guys as well and known you for it was our pleasure 10 my pleasure 10 oh shucks uh, 10 <laughs> plus years um, yeah. and actually i've seen kind of firsthand how um you and charlotte have chosen to to live um really um generously and, and hospitality has been a big part of your life and obviously i think god um breaks our hearts for different things and that's definitely something i think that god's broken your hearts for and in what way do you think that has impacted your life and the choices that you guys have made? And yeah, I think that we we've seen generosity as a married couple um, in way, ways beyond anything that that we could ever have imagined. Um, you know, and this world is not about money. Like, let's get that straight. It's not about money. Um, but actually, we still have to live, and we and money does make the world go round in a sense. Um, and so we all have things we need to buy and you know we, we saw generosity that 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 just makes us well up and nearly cry every time we think about it or see those people so we we've seen that and not, nothing really could could reach those levels um in us mm. so anything we do give to people it, it's kind of like we're fine we've got a house mm. on we've got a roof over our heads uh, we've got everything. We walk over the phones. We've got cars. We've got everything. Yeah. So I think I think I think financially, um, we've always we've always tried to give what we can. Um, I think it's really important. I think there's it's just it's on our hearts, um, and it's not that's in no way trying to show off. I think it's really important. If you give, don't tell people necessarily. Mm. Yeah, it's not about that. If you're going to tell people, well, what's the, what who are you giving for? Mm. Um, in your generosity it's like, yeah, your time is important as well and just checking up on people and have some empathy towards people and, yeah. and part of that is actually people have a financial need and you know what if you can give you know we can, well, I, we can give loads more than we do you know we, we've mm. got we've got everything we want here you know mm. we don't give everything we can so we could do more but yeah i think i think generosity is something which 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 is is really important to us and so we, we would we would have stories like 
I don't know, um, something, something beyond our hearts that this person, and a lot of the time, it, some of the times it, it's people that we know or, mm. you know, that, that actually have a bit of a shortfall or, or something. Mm. And, we've got that, and so both of us individually would go, yeah, we really feel that person needs that money, needs some money. Mm. And then you go, okay, well, how much? And Charlotte would go, well, I've got a figure in my head. I said, well, I've got a figure in my head. And it's going to say yours. And so I'd say it might be, call it, you know, again, it's, it's nothing, but mm. call it £200. And she would say £500. And so we'll go, oh, £500, really? <laughs> okay, fine. So, and you kind of, you have to go with that higher figure because, well, why not? <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, she's, she generally always has a higher figure. Mm. And, and, you know, the fact that we've got that money in the first place is pretty incredible. And, and it will be all right, you know. Mm. If, if, it's, if it was a ten thousand pounds, will you find it somewhere, or you mm. don't, or you get, you know, if that's what the need is, then then do it, get on with it, and lump it up. So mm. yeah, so we we will, we try and live by that. Um, and again, that's that's a massive focus on on money, on financially giving. Mm. Actually, some people that's not possible, or, mm. or you know, who says that's who says that's more important than time or mm. or anything else that that we go. So all the skills and think, you know, if you if you Another thing we do is like if you've got friends that need something or you've got that skill, then you give that skill. Mm. It's, it's, it's simple. If I can do a wedding for someone, a friend, then why would you charge? I, I don't, yeah. So that's kind of where, where we've rested. I see like as you're talking, I, you know that story about when Jesus is walking on water and he asked Peter to step out of the boat. And ultimately, like as he steps out onto the water um, and he starts freaking out, he like starts to sink and Jesus is like who has called you to this who has asked yeah. you to like walk on water and as soon as Peter looks at Jesus's eyes he starts to be able to walk on water as well yeah. and yeah. actually it's it's that point isn't it is that actually like okay God's asked me to do this do we does it seem feasible right now maybe not but we're yeah. going to step out um, and actually once you start focusing on your own situation then you do start to sink back but when you start focusing on Jesus that's the point where yeah. you're like yeah and it's not asking like it's going back to financially it's not asking you to give up everything you've got mm. you know but it's just just generally just you know and you could say 10 percent but actually 100 percent is what mm. god's given you so you're keeping 90 mm. percent. it's not that we give out 10 percent all the time but yeah mm. like there was one story mm. go on. when years ago we so we we when we recently got married and we um i'm hoping it doesn't cut out here but we, yeah, we got, we got married and we didn't, we didn't have much money at all. We really, really didn't. And there was mm. something that came in and we needed, I think it was 50 pounds or 20 pounds. It was something small like that, but we just didn't, we just simply didn't have it. Mm. And Paul was at home and he felt a nudge from God to drop around a 20 pounds or 50, say 50 pounds mm. in an envelope uh, and leave on our doorstep. And he did. He dropped it around Amazing. and it was that money. It was that mm. money. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that broken. That's, that's yeah. A small generosity compared to what we've received, but actually mm. that still has that impact. So you could do that for someone. Um, mm. And actually, night. again, it goes back to the whole thing of like, you know, if God's calling us to, then we step out. Just like you know, God's lavishly been like generous to you, and actually, that's how you felt then called out to be generous. Yeah, and if we can have that impact on someone else's life, mm -hmm. you know, what a massive privilege. And it's not, again, it's not about us. It's about actually bringing the kingdom of God here. Mm. Um, and that's that, again, that, that sounds all very holy, but it's, it's true. But it's it? true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Step away from your cheesy Christian ideas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, amazing. I think we've heard enough no i'm joking it's been so yeah. good johnny and um, thank you so much for sharing and being honest and um for your words of wisdom and oh, your... it's my absolute pleasure thanks uh, <laughs> that's it isn't it actually what's I was like talking about this bit right i need to go now <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. um thanks also johnny. i suppose also, one last okay. thing one last thing I will say, actually, I'll have my pennies worth. Um, be generous with your comments. Mm, big. Great, isn't it? It is. You know, so words, words are so important. And there's so a lot true. of banter jokes, which is which I get involved in as well. But be generous with your comments. Yeah. Mm. 
It's so true. Yeah, yeah. And a text just takes a couple of seconds to send, but it can change somebody's day. Yeah, really can. Really can. So true. You've all got my number. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see if they've learned. (laughs) Yes. Thank you. It was an absolute privilege chatting to you. Thanks, Johnny. See you later. Bye. Bye.